Sticks, but they're tampons. Yeah, it smells like ginseng. Huh? We're here in Gundam. I had to do it a little bit. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Two more. Two more. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to Korea. So this video was actually filmed on my previous trip to Korea, which was about two months ago. It just took me a long time to edit. So if you see a difference in weather, it's very cold here now. That is why. Yeah, on my previous trip, besides work, I really focused on the fashion scene and the cafe scene. The cafe scene is on another level here. There's so many cute, delicious, different cafes to explore. Korea is actually a place, or Seoul in particular, is a place that I haven't explored much of and I'm very much looking forward to exploring more. But yeah, I could spend a whole month going to cafes, trying different foods and drinks, and just people watching because the people out on the streets are so put together, so cute, so fashionable. Why don't we look this cool walking around? So this is what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about the Korean fashion scene and where it stands now or about two months ago until now going forward and I'm also going to mix in a bit of the music scene because we're going to be drawing in a lot of inspiration from Blackpink's Lisa. This process is going to be done in many steps because first we needed to go to Korea and really understand and gain knowledge and sort of infiltrate the fashion scene. I want to know what people are wearing, where they're getting it from and where they're taking their outfit photos. I actually found where a lot of people take cool outfit photos, it's where the Korean fashion shows take place, but I got a little distracted. Oh, it looks so cute though. We're gonna get help from my local friend Sunny, who's gonna show us all of the popular places to shop and tell us what's trending in Korea now. Then I'll explore some of the brands and shops that Lisa turns to, followed by dressing like her for a week. In the closest way possible, which you could call it in an obsessive way, but I'm gonna call it in a detailed way because I got everything from her rings to her contact lenses and everything in between. All right, so first step is to fly to Korea, which didn't go that smoothly because I thought the flight was an hour later, so we were really late. And then the Uber driver missed the highway cutoff, so we were even more late. And then our gate closes in three minutes and we have to wait for the train to go to the gate. I've never done this before. It is not fun. It is stressful. Not a good way to start a trip. Oh my god. We made it. Where are we going? So What are we gonna do there? So far. Isn't it always fun to work with me? Yeah. It's always it's always an adventure. This is our first trip together and it's going really well. We made it on the plane, ate some really yummy food, and then about three hours later we landed in Korea and luckily so did our luggage. To Korea! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> trip begins! Just checked into our hotel. Now we have no plans tonight. Well, I have plans later, um, but we have no plans for dinner, so I think we're just gonna walk around the area and see what we can find. That's always the best thing to do, in my opinion, when you're in a new place, just walk around and you might discover something really good. Natalie's actually staying in the room right next to us. Natalie? Can you hear me? No, I heard ha you talking. You can hear me talking? No, I can't hear you talking. I want to say hello from the and other side. And that's too scary though. Please don't. <laughs> I'm gonna haunt you tonight. <laughs> True, actually.
The next day, we met up with my friend Sunny at a cafe. Sunny is a YouTuber, influencer, one of my good friends living in Korea. She sort of shares her time between Korea, Japan, and Indonesia, I'd say. But she makes really good makeup videos. She's incredibly fashionable. She has beauty collaborations. She has earring collaborations. She's an entrepreneur and she's just incredibly talented and smart and a great person to be around. And she knows a lot about the fashion scene in Korea. A lot about anything in Korea. Every time I have a question, I message her and she always has really good recommendations. So I'm gonna link her Instagram below and her YouTube below. If you have any questions, definitely hit her up. She's you know, she's so nice and she, she's just she just knows where to go. So yeah, we met up with her and after catching up over some coffee and some Korean dessert, it was time to shop. What would you say is trending right now in Korea for full winter? So, um, you know like cardigans? Mm -hmm. We used to always think of it as an outer, right? Yeah. So, um, a lot of the Korean online stores or like local brands, they now use it as more of a top. Oh yeah, so like tuck in tuck, into pants. Yeah, and tuck it up. in, uh, tuck it in, and then um, pair it with like high waisted um, skirts, high waisted leather skirt, the pants and the top. Uh, those type of uh, lazy outfits are really in as well. I've seen a lot of like beige outfit, like uh, um, not trench, but more like even like the sweaters and the skirts are beige. Monotones are oh, okay. pretty in right now. Darker um, socks, like colored socks because in, in the in the summer like the neon color socks were really in but now I think uh, more of a darker color socks are really in as well oh red so you would say red is in red because um, for the rest of the world pistachio and green tones oh, are really? very in yeah and then creams whites and creams are yeah. very in um, but I think Korea is more like beige and brick orange re orange tone reds are really in. Uh, I think the whole country love like even brick on like makeup, like orange tone makeup, browns, nudes, brown, beige. red, orange. Yeah, those that are spectrum. really big, color wise. Oh, okay. Mm. Sunny took me to her favorite area to shop, Hongdae, and we started at a handbag store. So the first stop is Marhenje. Marhenje is a really famous local, uh, uh, Korean local brand for bags. So they're really affordable. I think, if I'm not mistaken, their price range from 70 to 100. And they're really famous for their canvas bags. Let's and you were saying them. a lot of idols. Yes, a lot of idols them. wore them uh, for magazine shoots or even like for their airport fashion. Um, I think oh, that's red a big velvet, thing here. Yeah, right? red airport velvet. Airport. And also a lot of other K-pop idols wore it as well. These bags were really well designed. The fabric was really nice. They're very practical. They reminded me of a tote bag that you could also close and it has pockets inside and you can customize it. I was really into them. And then we walked about five minutes down the road to more of the vintage shop area. So we're in a really cute area. There's a cute vintage dress store across from us that sells handmade vintage dresses that yeah. Sunny said a lot of celebrities wear and are really well priced. And then across from that, we have some days which you described as... It's more like an office wear, but a lot more mature, but you can still see like there's a cute accent to it. Yeah. It's almost like a mature list Lisa, if you guys know it. Yeah. yeah, we know it well yeah. <laughs> on this channel. Yeah, they're pretty famous with this one too. They have like an off like shoulder, like blouse, oh. like this. Yeah, it's really cute. Yeah, this is really famous. Oh my God, so this Lisa days. <laughs> This area is where my beloved Style Landa is located, their flagship store. It's a really, really big one, and I was so excited to show you guys it because it looks really cool, but it was unfortunately closed for renovations. But there's also this really cute store called Chu that's right across the street. Which is another really cute shop that I shop a lot online, but they take a little bit long to ship. So if you're in Korea, it's really it's a really good idea to check airport it out. Airport wear is a big thing in Korea. What you wear to the airport really matters. So it's interesting that they have special airport collaborations here even. Oh my god, it's so cute. Yeah. 
So we're at our third show. I think third, fourth. Third or fourth show. Yeah. <laughs> we lost count. <laughs> Yeah. This is Adder, one of Sunny's favorite stores. I've never heard of it. I'm so excited to check it out. This building is gorgeous. Yes, and it looks like a showroom museum almost. And a lot of their clothes are worn by really famous hip hop R&B artists in Korea. And um, they're available for worldwide shipping as well. If you oh. guys are interested, um, yeah, Taylor will link it down below. And uh, this brand is really like really good quality and a lot of their stuff is unique like streetwear but more on the unique styles we just came across Devaha and on one of the Blackpink Diaries episodes Rosé and Lisa actually came here to buy jewelry so we're gonna check it out which um, jewelry did Lisa buy from Blackpink? Uh, <laughs> We made some purchases. Rose and Lisa got these two rings. A couple's one. So we got these two rings. A triplet's one. Yeah. And go. Next shop. <laughs> so the final shop Sunny's showing us today is Rolla Rolla. Yes. So cute. Pink. It reminds me a bit of WeGo in Japan right. by but looking at it. This one is a little bit on the pricier side and also a lot of K-pop idols have been seen wearing these for, for their airport fashion, music videos. Ah. So if you guys are a big fan, definitely check it out as well. And of course, there's photo areas. Oh my god, this is so cute! One thing I noticed about most of the shops in Korea is that they set up areas to take social media pictures. Whether it's a set inside or outside or a really cute mirror. Selfies are definitely welcome. Getting brands or items that Lisa wore in her photos was really tough, actually impossible. I tried to go to Nonagon, but I ended up in this home DIY renovation area. And then I tried to go to a store that distributes Nonagon and they told me that those items no longer exist. That was last season. Then we went to one of those stores that looks really cool. There's there's cool music in it. There's only a few items hung up. It's very industrial. Um, a lot of cool, fashionable people walking around. We're here in Gundam and we're at Rare Market. So this is a shop that curates many Korean designer brands, many rare brands, unique brands, and one of the brands we're really interested in finding here is, I'm gonna butcher this name, I'm so sorry, but Hien Seo, Hien Seo. There's a really cool sort of military utility looking outfit that Lisa wears. Yeah, we're gonna head in there and see what we can find. They give you this cover to put over your head so that you can you don't get your makeup on the clothes. As I was trying to get this on, it's very tight and white and I was very scared to put it on. There was customers trying to break in my change room at the same time so I just felt even more scared and basically I just got out of there as soon as I possibly could. So I flew back to Hong Kong pretty much empty handed because I wasn't able to get the outfits that I was hoping to and I went through Lisa's Instagram and realized she's been wearing a lot of Celine lately which makes sense because she's the brand's ambassador. Actually each Blackpink member is the ambassador of a luxury brand right now. Lisa's is Celine and I don't have the budget to buy her Celine outfits. We will go there later to try some on. So I decided to look online for some of her more affordable items and I couldn't find those either. So then I decided to search Lisa Blackpink on Taobao and I found a ton of copies of things she's worn before. I opted for more of her casual style in hopes that I will really like the items and get a lot of wear out of them. Well, I'd say casual but different, like this denim jacket dress thing. I've never worn anything like it, so I wanted to try it, and this tie-up blouse. Alright, so the first outfit is this knitted rough around the edges sweater. It's, a, it's in white color and it's cropped. Lisa wore this, I think two times because she wore it a little differently. One was on her flight from Hong Kong back to Korea after they did their concert here. And one was, she's holding this birthday cake. I'm guessing it's some sort of birthday celebration.
celebration for herself. I'm sure you guys will correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Makeup wise, I noticed Lisa goes for a very natural look. She tends to more play with her lip color, ranging from a nude to a bricky red or an orangey red. When she has performances or events, she adds a little bit more color, a little bit more glam to her face. But in general, for this video, I'm just gonna go for her casual everyday look. So for my eye makeup, I just did a very thin line, as thin as I possibly could, and flicked it up and just used a little bit of brown eyeshadow on the edges to soften it up and a little bit of brown mascara. I also tried to make my eyebrow shape a little bit straighter like Lisa's. And now we're gonna do the lips. So for this particular outfit I'm about to put on, I noticed she has a bricky, slightly orange, reddish color lipstick. I'm gonna use this one from Wake Make. I'm gonna kind of blend it out and smudge it out towards the outside because I noticed a lot of K-pop idols do that to make their lips look more soft and natural. I like mine overlined, so I find it hard to do this look. And lastly, I need contact lenses because Lisa really often plays with her contact lenses. She either goes for a natural looking brown one or gray ones most of the time. And Lisa and all of Blackpink actually model for this brand called Olens. And those are the actual contacts that they wear. And Olens contacted me to do a collab. It's actually in my last, I keep saying actually, I don't know. <laughs> Olens actually, we did a collaboration on my last video where I tried a whole bunch of colors. If you want to see that video, I will link it below. On this video, I'm just going to focus on the ones that Lisa wears because they sent me those too. I haven't opened it yet. She told me she also put in something special. Huh? It's real. I'm gonna <laughs> cry. I'm actually tearing up. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Olin. Why did you do this for me? Oh, it comes with their cards, their CD, and a photo book. Oh my god! <laughs> Why am I? I'm gonna break it. What the heck? Is it real? Yeah. A part of me wants to ask them because maybe it's fake. But then a part of me doesn't want to know because it will be like knowing Santa Claus isn't real. I mean, he is. But why Why did they give that to me? Why are you so nice to me? This, I've lost all focus now. I need to do this video. I'm going to look at this more later. No, that's Rosé. Oh, their signatures are so cute. Okay, I need to put this down. Oh, it's just like a photo album. What did I do to deserve this? Oh, they sent me so many gray lenses. So they sent me all the ones Lisa wears. So the two I saw in most of the ads were either the Island gray ones last time or the Symphony gray. The Symphony gray is in the latest ad. I'm gonna wear the Symphony gray ones first. I actually wore them in my last video. They were my favorite lens of the whole time. Oh, this is so exciting! Where am I gonna put this? Okay, I'm gonna put it right next to my wedding photo. The wall of my accomplishments. Tinder profile. Oh, if I had a Tinder profile, I would put this on there. Oh, I have no chill, guys. I can't focus. I haven't been this excited since the Spice Girls. Oh, I'm sweating. Did I put deodorant on today? I think not. So as you can see, the lenses are a darker gray on the outside, followed by a lighter gray and this sort of orangey yellowish color on the inside. The G diameter is 13.5, which stands for the graphic diameter. So it tells you how much of the graphic is covering your eye. All right, lenses are in, makeup is done. Now it's time to get dressed to finish off the whole look. So I tried to make this as close to Lisa's outfit as possible and I think I pretty much got there. So I noticed that she wore this black tight tucked in shirt underneath which I'm also wearing. And then she wore the sweater unzipped and sort of pushed back so that it made this downward shape. It's practical, it's comfy, but it's also um, a little bit elevated with the heels, a little bit elegant at the same time. I feel like there's a juxtaposition going on here. I feel like this is a little bit grungy with the roughed up hemlines and sort of like bagginess, but then there's like a slim line with the jeans and the heels. Baggy at the top, but very tight at the bottom. So I can see what she was going with here. This is actually something I will probably wear a lot. It's really comfy. Today I'm pretty much staying home and working on things on the computer. 
but in the spirit of Lisa, we're gonna be eating her favorite food, which is french fries, and she says that was her favorite food since she was a child. It's also one of my favorite foods. So yes, we're gonna be doing a french fry mukbang slash rating. I've ordered a few different french fries from three different places. KFC, Jollibee's, and McDonald's. Here in Hong Kong, they take fries to another level. They always have different seasoning packets. It changes month to month. This month, it's honey barbecue seasoning and seaweed seasoning. Pour your french fries into the bag. Pour in your seasoning. And then you shake it. And then voila, perfectly seasoned, delicious fries. <coughs> Ooh, but right off the bat, these look quite similar in texture to McDonald's fries. Very similar shape. Ooh. Oh, those smell delicious. I went with the waffle fries. They have some sort of seasoning on them, but I don't know what. Classic McDonald's french fry. Always good. These are a little bit cold, but it's still good. Honey barbecue. Oh, that is delicious. Seaweed is always a good flavor. I've tried it before. It sounds gross, but seaweed chips in Japan are the best chips. It's like your classic salty chip, but it gives a little like, a little bit of a deeper flavor. So good. Let me cleanse my palate. Jollibee's. Ooh, nice crunch. A little bit lacking in flavor compared to the McDonald's. It's not, it tastes a little bit cleaner though. Maybe a little, I don't know. A little, just a little bit more plain. I feel like I need some gravy or this would be great with the dipping sauces, but plain on its own, I feel like McDonald's is better. These taste a lot more oily though. And the potatoes more soft. I think I'm gonna need to do a little bit more research before I come to my conclusions. Final thoughts. In first place, we have McDonald's. These were definitely the best fries. Good crunch, excellent choice of toppings. Their ketchup is delicious. Number two, we have KFC. I like the texture of the waffle fries. Um, nice seasoning on the top. A little bit too oily, so that's kind of what put them in number two. And in third place, we have Jollibee. Their fries were lacking in seasoning. I don't know if it was just this specific Jollibee or the specific staff that made them, but um, yeah, there just wasn't a lot of flavor. There wasn't a lot of taste. It was just tastes like plain potato, not even a lot of salt. But they do have a good garlic mayonnaise. So my next outfit is this white shirt with black jeans. I also tried to pair it with gold underneath the shirt, just like Lisa did, a black chain bag. I am not a fan of this outfit, this shirt. Is so tight and the sausage, like the casing. The elastics, look, it's cutting off my circulation. No matter where I place it on my arm, it's really tight. And I don't think Lisa's shirt is like this because Lisa's looks like it's cotton. It looks a lot more free and not as tight. Maybe I could have gone up a size. I really like um, Lisa's casual baggy style. That's really something I identify with, it, with but I I feel like claustrophobic, I can feel everything squeezing. But it does look similar to her shirt. I have to give them that. It's, it's very similar. I feel like I have to stand really straight because every time I like move something will like pop out because it's just like being pushed. So now we're gonna head to the mall. I wanna go to the Celine store and try on some of Lisa's outfits. Specifically, I really wanna find the one she wore to the Celine um, show. It was this sparkly skirt and white turtleneck and it looked so, so nice. I just wanna try it on and see what it feels like and see what it looks like. The air con is like pumping in here. It's so cold in Hong Kong malls. I layered a blazer over because it's cold, but I have to say the shirt is growing on me. I really like the details here. It really does look like Lisa's shirt and it's only six US dollars, so I feel like it's not a bad deal. I think if I just got a size up, I would be completely happy with it. This change room is so nice and so big. Okay, so they have the right turtleneck, 
but the skirt she was wearing is a couture piece and they only had two in Hong Kong and it's already sold out but I got kind of similar skirts this one's lace instead of sparkly so I'm gonna try them on with that That sucks they didn't have this skirt, but also I didn't know that that was couture and I probably would have been scared to try it on because it must be really, really expensive. The clothing is already crazy expensive, but it was really nice to try on the outfits and just see the way it fits, see the cutting. I really loved the skirt. It, it really cinched your waist and I love the pleating on it and the turtleneck was so nice. I love the look of a sort of semi-see-through turtleneck. Turtlenecks are very conservative, but when you can slightly just see the bra, it makes it a little sexy. And Celine is a designer that I've loved for a long, long time. Their pieces are classic, timeless. They they never go out of style. They fit really well. They're elegant. They're chic. I I definitely drew a lot of inspiration from Celine when selecting items for for tote. This fall winter, I really love the culottes. Culottes. I should really learn how to say that that word now that I'm a shop owner. Um, with the with the boots and their trousers and the for the spring summer, I love their full denim outfits paired with um, blazers on top. It looks really cool. Definitely gonna, yeah, create some outfits with that. But yeah, it's nice to pop in and check out the clothes. They have so many nice things I will dream of owning one day. It's nice to feel like Elisa and just put them on for a minute. In today's outfit, I'm going to wear this polka dot, frilly, strappy, long sleeve top. And Lisa actually got this at H&M, but of course it's no longer available there. But there are a lot of dupes available online and I got this one for about eight US dollars. I'm not sure what the original price was of it at H&M, but if I find it, I'll put it here. Blackpink tends to wear some very expensive designer brands, but they also wear a lot of H&M, Zara, Mango, many more affordable brands. So if you're trying to copy their style, there are definitely some options, so that's pretty This cool. is such a nice shirt. I really like it. It has this drawstring waist here, so it's very adjustable. You can make it as tight or as loose as you want. I love the frilly details. I love the neckline. I love the shoulders, how the shoulders are bare, but you have these straps to hold it up. It just, it looks very feminine and cute. And then Lisa also paired it with some jeans to give it a more casual look and loafers. And that's something I noticed Lisa does often with her wardrobe. She likes to have juxtaposing items. She likes things that can be very feminine, like lace and frilly and mixing them with more sort of boyish oversized things like suits and cargo pants. And I'm really into that myself. I see you, Lisa. I see what you're doing and I like it. And I'm glad I have some new um, items that I can add to my collection because I'm, I'm really into this style. Even though I love this outfit, I don't really have anywhere special to wear it today because I need to do a lot of work from home. Um, I'm basically gonna do that and then I'll probably go out and walk Rosie later and take a selfie in it. I need to post something in this. But I'll definitely be wearing this shirt a lot, so I'm gonna wear this out into the world on, on another day. Hey guys, we are just out shopping today. My outfit is actually all pieces I already had in my closet, but the whole thing put all together was very much inspired by Lisa's Celine outfit that she posted on her Instagram. So I'm wearing this leather blazer from Tote and a white t-shirt, some skinny jeans, and some cowboy. We're food. going to find some food. We're thinking sushi. We are doing this uh, new sushi place. We decided on sushi, which also happens to be Lisa's favorite Japanese food. It's also one of mine. I think it's one of everybody's. We're going to this place that also exists in Shibuya. It's from Shibuya, Tokyo, but it's kind of new here in Hong Kong. And they have a lot of good stuff. Hey guys, it's another day. Today I'm gonna to be wearing this denim dress that Lisa paired with very bright socks and some rainbow sneakers. I don't really have bright red socks or rainbow sneakers, but I'm gonna try and find socks with a pop of color and probably just wear my plain white ones. But I do have the denim dress that looks very similar to hers. So it comes in at the waist. We got that detail right. And 
yeah, overall, it looks very, very similar. So right when I put it on, I noticed the material is a lot thinner than what Lisa's looks like. Hers looks um, a lot thicker and baggier. I'm wearing a size small, so I could probably go a size up to make it look a bit baggier, but also the material is just a lot thinner. And the arms are quite short. Lisa's are very long. And I paired it with these. I found some sort of red socks. They have a little red heart detail. And I matched it with my Superga Korean heart finger shoes to sort of add that cute element with the pop of color detail that Lisa added in. And I've got a crossbody bag. It's not the same color as Lisa's. I think mine's a little bit of a less color popping version of hers. A little bit tighter than the material and shorter arms. But I don't mind it. I kind of, this outfit is quite comfy, quite casual and chill, easy to throw on. In conclusion, I learned so much about the Korean fashion scene. I hope you learned a thing or two too. Much thanks to Sunny, and I've learned so much about uh, Lisa's style and personality. Much thanks to the fan closet accounts and the fan fact websites. And I had so much fun dressing like her. I have always loved her style. It's such a great mix of street style with flirty feminine pieces, it's very casual at the same time, it's very playful. I think my favorite outfit of the week was probably the dotted blouse outfit, but let me know which outfit you liked, and if you're into Blackpink, let me know which member's style you identify the most with. Thank you to Sunny for being in this video, and thank you to Olens for sending me the contact lenses and Blackpink's autographed album, that was crazy. And I am gonna go out now and explore Korea, we're gonna take some outfit photos for the Tote website, and I will see you guys very soon with another video. Thank you so much for watching.